Hi, and welcome to Davis Sports Report. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Hey, everybody. So we've got a lot to cover. We are talking about women's bas college basketball and some allegations that have been coming out here um, recently over the last week, uh, since August 31st. So a little over a week now. And we're going to go ahead and get into two of those. So we're going to start off today with Ashlyn Watkins. Let me pull that up for you guys. So Ashlyn plays for the University of South Carolina. She is 20 years old, height is six foot three, position is forward, and she is a junior this year. So the allegations coming out about Ashlyn Watkins is assault and kidnapping, and those uh, hold some jail time. So let's go ahead and hear what the news article had to say about Ashlyn. Tonight, Gamecock women's basketball star Ashlyn Watkins is free on bond after being charged with assault and kidnapping. She was arrested following an incident at a housing complex on campus on Lincoln Street. Our Cassidy Byer has the latest. Ashlyn Watkins is known as one of the stars of USC's national championship basketball team. She's a Columbia native and was an All-American at Carnal Newman High School. But earlier Saturday morning, she was arrested on a charge of first-degree assault and kidnapping for what police say happened at 650 Lincoln Street, a USC student housing center on campus. According to a warrant from USC campus police, they, along with firefighters, responded to a fire alarm there. The warrant states the alarm was pulled by the victim attempting to flee from walk-ins. Prior to pulling the alarm, the warrant claims Watkins forcefully grabbed the victim's face, pulled her by her arms, pushed her, picked her up against her will, and carried her away. The warrant states the incident was captured on video surveillance. The victim's injuries were described as non-life-threatening. So that's important to note. It was captured on video. Let's continue. Watkins was then transported to the Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center. Saturday afternoon, News 19 attended Watkins' bond hearing, where no cameras were allowed. In court, prosecutors said both Watkins and the victim, who was referred to as a minor, knew each other. Watkins' attorney Todd. Okay, I'm going to time out right there. Um, Watkins, uh, the victim, was described as a minor. Now, in the United States, a minor is anyone under the age of 18, and... For certain crimes, it's going to be anyone under the 17. And for horrendous crimes, it's going to be anyone under the age of 16. As we've seen lately, though, they go can go as far, as far back as 14 on charging a child as an adult, um, depending on the crime. But for this case, um, the key word here is minor, which means we probably won't see this police report because they do have laws in place to protect the identity of minors. Um, so, yeah, if, if we don't see anything, don't get alarmed. It's because the victim is a minor and that could be someone that's 17 years of age. And let's keep in mind, 17 year olds are in college now. I don't know that this victim was. OK, let's continue. Rutherford says they're asking for the public's patience at this time. We believe that once everybody has a, a full grasp of what happened, that uh, this will end up being a misunderstanding. Uh, what we know for certain is that Ashley did not assault anyone, and she certainly did not kidnap anyone. The judge granted Watkins a $30,000 PR bond, which means she didn't have to pay to be released from jail. As a condition of the bond, she's not allowed to have contact or be within a thousand yards of the victim. News 19 has confirmed her next court appearance is set for October 25th. Cassidy Byer, News 19, WLTX. Now, also, a spokesperson for USC said that they are aware of the situation and are gathering more information. Okay. So that was the first report on it. Um, a day later, there was a new report coming out. Of course, South Carolina is on top of this story. And so they are covering it literally on a daily basis. So let's hear what they have to say the next day. Well, continuing coverage tonight in the arrest of University of South Carolina basketball player Ashlyn Watkins. An athletic department spokesperson told WIS Today that per policy, any athlete arrested is suspended, but would not confirm specifically if Watkins had been suspended. Although, just a short time ago, two trusted sources have confirmed to WIS that Watkins' suspension has been lifted. 
And if you guys recall, her dad also posted on social media that her suspension had been lifted. So let's keep going here. Now Watkins is charged with assault and battery in the first degree and kidnapping. According to an incident report, Watkins was in an argument with a female, female juvenile at an on-campus affiliated apartment complex at 650 Lincoln Street early Saturday morning. The report states officers found the victim being restrained by Watkins from jumping over a ledge at the building's parking garage. The victim initially told police Watkins hit her multiple times. However, later said Watkins never hit her. Okay, so time out right here. Um, the victim said Watkins hit her and then later recanted her story. Again, the first, uh, uh, the first news report we saw said there is video footage. There are some articles and some people saying that the girl uh, put herself on the ledge and Watkins was trying to get her down off the ledge for her own safety. And that's why she was holding her when the police and firemen came. Was it that she was S word? Or was she trying to jump to get away? WIS reporter Naomi Popa joins us live to explain the charges and what this means for the athlete. And Naomi, as we read through that incident report, a lot of conflicting information. And at one point, the victim refused to cooperate with police. That's right, Judy Hanna. As you know, a first degree assault and battery charge is a felony. That means if Watkins is conv convicted, she faces up to 10 years in prison. Now, as for the kidnapping charge, I spoke with state representative and local attorney Seth Rose. He tells me the state's kidnapping statute needs to change for several reasons concerned that I think most people would be shocked to know restricting someone's movement for a moment in time is kidnapping Rose says when law enforcement charges a person with kidnapping it's often heavy-handed if the person isn't responsible for an abduction a kidnapping charge is considered a felony and is punishable by up to 30 years if convicted of the crime mm -hmm. Rose says kidnapping misconceptions is reason alone that the statute should change for South Carolina the kidnapping statute needs to be changed because under the current law, if you restrict someone's movement for an instant, for a moment, then you are guilty of kidnapping. And that defies logic and what the general public would see. When you see so-and-so arrested for kidnapping, you would rightfully think that they've thrown someone in the trunk of their car and gone for a ride, or they've locked someone in their basement and left them. That's not what has to happen. According to an arrest warrant, police say Watkins, during an argument at 650 Lincoln Street, pull a fire alarm, leaving police and fire to respond. As for the first degree assault and battery charge, Watkins faces up to 10 years in prison. Rose tells me if anyone does something with the intent to harm another person and lays hands on that person, it's considered assault and battery. But if I do something with the intent to harm you and I, I lay hands on you, that's assault and battery, and then we just start ciphering out what level of assault and battery. I would like to say that I'm happy that they are looking at changing some of these laws. I mean, they are using a very broad brush to convict people on some of these crimes. I don't think kidnapping should be, you know, you getting in someone's way. I think that's insane. Um, but if she held her and drug her um, against her will, I am thinking that maybe constitutes is let me know what you guys think. Does that constitute as kidnapping? If you are physically holding someone against their will, not impeding them for a moment in time. Let me know what you guys think on that one. Let's keep going. State Representative Seth Rose, whose district includes USC's campus, tells me he has spoken to prosecutors and will be working on a revision to state law and its definition of a mere moment sufficing as kidnapping or abduction, abduction charge. Excuse me. Reporting in studio, I'm Naomi Popa, WIS News 10. And Naomi, because of such high interest in this case, we just want to reiterate, as we said earlier in your story, that the USC Athletics Post person never confirmed that Watkins was suspended. But late tonight, just before our newscast, two trusted sources did confirm to WIS that Watkins' suspension has now been lifted. So obviously, as we learn more, we'll certainly keep you up to date as well. That's right. Thank you, Judy. So, okay, for me, when I heard that her suspension was lifted, I will say I was a bit disappointed not because I think she's guilty. I was more so disappointed because I didn't feel like due diligence had enough time to be done yet. So I definitely want 
um, any of these basketball programs or sports programs to take these types of allegations seriously. And, um, you know, if she is found innocent, by all means, get back with the team and go forth. So it's showing here, like I was saying, they're covering this on a daily basis. You see on the second, the third, the fourth, they were saying um, her suspension was lifted and by the fifth, it's back on. So I don't know if it's because it got leaked to the media that she's now suspended again, but um, they are going to, the team is, the championship team is going to the White House to visit the White House on Tuesday, September 10th. And I'm not sure that she'll be with them. If you're suspended, you're not supposed to travel with the team or participate in school activities. So we'll see what happens there. That's, and you know, this is a far cry from isn't just over just yet, and neither are when camps, Ashlyn was, in South Carolina, um, you know, Washington. conducting a youth basketball camp. But I really expected her to be the leader this year of that team. She's a junior. She is um, phenomenal. I, I think she is a great player. And I really thought that she was going to be the leader of the team this year. I know Full Wiley will be the point guard, but Full Wiley's still fairly young. She's coming into her sophomore year this year. And um, Ashlyn is a junior, so she's three years in. I just kind of thought she was going to be the leader of the team. So when this all happened, I was quite shocked by it all. You can be just as good as me. Like, just put the effort in and put the work in, and you'll be good, and you can go to a great college like I go to and maybe win a championship one day. And not only little girls look up to me, it's little boys as well. And that little boys also see women's basketball as not just something that's, like, not important, like, it's not important. But just, just as much as they see like men's college basketball or men's players that are doing big in, um, right now. So again, I mean, I asked you guys, what do you guys think? Will Ashland stay with South Carolina or if this suspension, you know, lives on, will she do like Sonia Ja and enter the transfer portal and go to a different team? You know, maybe that's the, the route this is going to take. Not really sure. Like, let me know what you guys think. First, do you think these allegations are true? If so, do you think it's going to impact her career? Like if she doesn't go to jail and she is, you know, hit with a misdemeanor or something like that, or do you think she will just switch to a different team? Memories are short sometimes. So uh, if she's on a different team, people may not even remember or think about it anymore. You know, she could go on to be successful somewhere else. That seems to be what's happening in college sports. If you get in trouble at the program you're at, you can just enter the transfer portal in the spring or the, the fall or winter and just go to another team and not even really have to live out that suspension. So let me know what you guys think below in the comment section. Thank you so much for joining us. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you on the next one. Goodbye.